going on everybody i'm back again with another video and today i'm going to explore one of my favorite neighborhoods in new york city which is a little bit touristy but i think i'm due for another recorded video which i haven't done in a couple of years which is actually called chinatown and compared to many other chinatowns around the world around the states north america that they usually have like one street a couple of blocks this one over here is stretches for a whole neighborhood making it one of the most important and biggest chinatowns around the world but there's also like four or a couple more Chinatowns around New York City, including Flushing, Queens, 8th Avenue, and Sunset Park, and Elmhurst. But I'm going to be walking around here, you know, showing you like the main streets and then going to the least touristy area and, and showing you some hidden gems around here in Chinatown. So without further ado, join me. And just to start, I'm kind of like at the borderline of financial district. And then over here is Columbus Park, which is literally like the beginning of Chinatown. And it's like a local park, you know, where people interact and they got games and stuff. And then once you go on the other side, it's where the main action is happening, especially in Mott Street. So let's walk ahead and see what can we find. And I got to tell you, despite it being a tarber, it's actually pretty warm today. I'm only wearing the hoodie just in case because, you know, the weather be changing. But I feel that summer vibe. But let's walk around here to park to see what can we find. You know, here they got, they got like a basketball court, volleyball field, and then ahead is like the plaza. And I'm wondering if this Columbus Park was the same one also who designed the Columbus Park in Hoboken. Because it kind of has like the similar architecture vibe over here. Gotta tell you, the weather's just lovely. So I guess you see all the uncles hanging out around here. <laughs> so I think it's a good place for you to practice either your Mandarin or Cantonese. You know, any Chinese language going on in the plaza should be around here. The only negativity is in the nighttime, you'll see a lot of rats running around here in this park. But I think it's one of the places with the most rats around New York City. You know, here's the plaza, and they are playing their games over here, chilling. So don't mess with the uncles. <laughs> playing dominoes, checkers, all of that. Good way to interact, you know, with Chinese people. They got the plaza right here. Friendly people too. Look at them right here. <laughs> They're pros. <laughs> Gotta love it. I love this neighborhood a lot. And even better when the weather's lovely. But before I hit Moss Street, I think I'm gonna walk towards Bayer Street. Good. I wanna show you like a local Vietnamese restaurant. That's actually one of my favorite ones. Some of the best pho in New York City. They sell them around here. So I gotta do that, then show you a little bit of Canal Street. And then we walk towards Mott Street to show you the touristy area. And then we're going to start making it towards the East Broadway section, which you're going to see how the vibes changes. So here, this is Mulberry Street and Bayer Street. But actually, the place I got to go is over that way. But you can see the vibes over here and pretty busy today. So of course, Chinatown is pretty popular for their food and massage joints. They also got shops around. But I really prefer to walk around the neighborhood to see what's going on in the vibes, all of that. So here we got a restaurant, Hand Pool noodles so you got different joints so actually i gotta run it's actually bastard street so you see the place where i get my pho to the point that sometimes like the people that work there they know me and they know pretty much what i'm getting because i've been there like so many times and as some of my friends come here they have to try the food a little bit i'll see how the street has changed and over here they're building something i'm not sure if this is where the rumor uh, building a prison is gonna happen or what they're gonna build here, but whatever it is, it looks like it's pretty massive. And this must be new. Kind of like a place, a bar, whiskey, tavern. And there is a viral place here at Sasson, which is a Dominican restaurant, which I've seen it through TikTok and Instagram. I tried the food here once and it was pretty good. And the prices were reasonable, so little hidden gem here in Chinatown. And then ahead of me is Pha Nang Terang which for a lot of places that I've been around New York City and other places around, it's probably the best pho I've ever had. Like the bar it keeps up with the flavors, no matter, even if it's a chicken one, and I want to show you. So this is my spot here. Right here, you go comfortable inside, walk in, and they'll have you seated, and they got really good food. Not just pho, but even the rice platters are pretty good. So now let's make it to our Canal Street, which is pretty busy, because it's always like a traffic jam, and it connects you from Brooklyn, to Jersey City, and then on the other side is Little Italy, so it's kind of like the division of Chinatown. And you're probably gonna see like street vendors, the fake stuff too, and fruit vendors. So take a little peek over there before we make it to Mott Street. And this is Canal Street, and you see kind of like a seafood market right here. 
I can smell it too, the seafood. And vendors over here, when you go up, it's gonna be the food stand area. And today it's not that busy, but there are days where it's super packed. And then over here you got the fruit vendors selling fresh fruits, fruit stands. And this over here is Mulberry Street, and you can see they still sell over here too. Well, I was up, and even across the street, they got more stuff going on. Here you got a bit of Mulberry Street, the Chinatown side. But if you cross that way, Canal Street, that's where Little Italy is, all the way at the end. And this here is really cool, and it kind of gives me vibes like when I was traveling throughout Southeast Asia. Like, especially Cambodia and Thailand, the way out they got the food stalls. But over there, it's even busier and crowded than here. But it kind of gives you like that semi vibe, you know? which is really cool. And then we are back again in BC, uh, Canal Street over here. So we got all of the banders right here. And then in some of the corners you sell the people that sell, you see the people that sell the fake stuff. And as much as I love this neighbor, you just gotta be a little aware of your surroundings, especially if you go around Canal and Broadway over there, it gets a little bit sketchy, but I'm not gonna say it's the worst thing in the world, but you know, just common sense and respect and all that. But yeah, so far, you know, really cool neighborhood. So ahead is Moth Street. Let's make it to probably the popular street in Chinatown and see what's going on. Then we're going to start making it to other streets around. And this over here is my street and today is not that crazy. Another thing I got to tell you, if you come here in the nighttime, it's actually nice too. Maybe even nicer because they got all the lights lit up, the way how they decorate the streets. But I'll show you what's going on ahead of me. So here you got, you know, a piece of my street. And it got business, you know, across the street. Over here it gets a little bit more crowded. A good place for you to practice your, bar your bargaining skills. This over here is Moth Street, but this one over here is pretty interesting, pretty interesting too. Ba I don't know if it's say Bayard or Bayard Street, but it's really cool. I think I actually like this street better than Moth Street. Uh, there's better restaurants, it's nicely more decorated than Moth Street. This is what you get over here. And like I say, in the nighttime, they be lighting this up, and it's really good. And then, of course, you see, you know, the business with the Chinese sign song, which it gives it like a nice vibe. And I think some of these restaurants are pretty popular because they got like a lot of people out right here waiting, even on a Thursday around three o'clock in the afternoon. But in the nighttime, sometimes you see people queuing up to get some of the foods right here, you know. And there's a market right here. One thing I like also is some of these old apartments, the way how they design with the balconies. And this building here looks pretty interesting. I'm not sure if you pay attention to it, but that's like a balcony, then it has, you know, the signs written in Chinese. And then a little semi 180 view of the entire street, which makes it, you know, pretty cool. So I think I like the street way better than Mott Street. And then while I was filming, <laughs> we have an uncle in the car looking at me curious. I guess he's like, this guy's recording. <laughs> You know, but he's not really pushy, you know, so far the vibes here are really good. So now let me turn back, make it towards Moth Street, and then we're going to show you another cool spot over here where they got Darius, Darius Street, but it's like a small 200 feet long street, but it's pretty historical and it has a lot of history back then. <music> Let me just show you this side over here, which is really cool. Yeah, it is. So here you get like a better look, a better view of what's going on. Because I feel like Mastery is just mostly like those stores and people selling the fake stuff. But over here you get like all the good restaurants. Well, Unless you go a little bit more towards that way, then it gets better. And of course you got the market right here. Where you sell everything. Then you get a view of the restaurants across the street. Decorated with a nice architecture. And then there are a couple of dessert spots right here, like this one. I think it specializes like in mango. It kind of reminds me of those desserts I saw in Malaysia and semi like a halo halo in the Philippines, but I guess if you're a fan of mango, they sell all the products right here. Then they got like candy shops if you have like a sweet tooth. I'm not really a big guy who eats sweets, but if you guys are into that, then of course it got a famous boba tea joint right here. It's really cool. 
So throughout the years, I've seen how a, ma how a lot of businesses, they be closing, but then they open up my new business. But I remember in the pandemic 2020, this was one of the first neighborhoods in New York City to suffer like super bad. But it's good to see that it's come up a long way and it's back again in action and people coming here, you know, to eat and explore the area. So it's good that we did like a huge recovery in three and a half or four years. Here we are again in Mott Street. And this side is actually best here. Once you pass Bayer Street. And they got a couple of joints, but I still see businesses are closed. What was going on here? They got like a tour guide or all this group out here. And then ahead of me on Mott Street, there is a little hidden gym that I want to show you. There's a little tiny street that goes around, and then at the end you see the Freedom Tower. So if you're a fan of taking Instagram pictures, this must be an area that you want to practice. You know, here we got Moss Street. This is another hidden gem, Pell Street. We're going to walk there in a bit, but let's go finish off Moss Street, and then I'll turn back to show you the other side over here, what's going on. And of course, also in February, by the Chinese New Year, this area gets pretty lit, pretty packed, you know, the people celebrating and you know pretty a lot a lot of colors especially the red color so ahead of here we got some pretty iconic restaurants going on and then there's a street called moscow street or corky lee way and that's where you get the hidden gem of the good shots i'm going to show you let's see if my camera can capture it so this over here is a little tiny street and over there you see at the end the freedom tower so this is where you get like a little hidden gem not sure how clear i'm getting it on my camera but you have an idea, it probably looks better on a cell phone. You got the tiny street. And there it is, Freedom Tower at the end. So a little nice hidden gem right here. But now let's hit back Mott Street and then we're going to turn back towards Pell Street and show you Darrier Street. And this is an iconic restaurant. I never eat them, but I heard nothing but good things about it. Hot key. So this over here has a couple of good spots. And I think it's mostly like in the basement where you go and you eat. There's another one, Wall Hop, and this is Southeast Asian one at the end called, I think it's called Walk Walk. And here they got like a dessert one, specializes in cheesecake and boba tea. And then this is the Southeast Asian one. And it looks like it's nothing, but you just got to go underneath and you eat down there. So, you know, it makes it pretty cool. Then over here, you got a video arcade. If you're a fan of playing arcades, they have it down here too. And then kind of like the ending or the borderline heading towards Lower East Side and Financial District is right here. And now let's make it back to probably one of my favorite streets in Chinatown. Yeah. Pell Street and Daria Street, you're going to see how nice it is. And then now here we are in the tiny street, Pell Street, which I'm going to show you ahead of me. You can see how it is. It'll be nicer if they turn it pedestrian and probably put like sitting areas in the streets. That's going to be a cooler vibe, but they decorate it, you know with lights on top, lanterns. And if you walk in the nighttime, it's actually pretty nice here. I was literally live streaming here yesterday and I decided to come back here. But I think it's like a different type of vibe if you come here in the nighttime. So I think that little group is literally like a tour guide touring around here. Then I see somebody with a huge camera. So that's really cool. I think this is a good street to do photo shoots. There's actually a guy shooting like a music video. I guess he's a singer. But then we are here in Bowery Street. So I'm going to make a ride over here and show you like the ending of uh, Darius Street. And we're going to walk by. They literally decorated the street and they painted the road with colors and they have outdoor sitting areas. So I think you guys are going to like it. So over here, you're going to be walking around. It looks like anything regular. This is like the other side of Chinatown that's less touristy, but I think it's pretty underrated. And then over here, you got the famous Darius Street right here. It's really tiny, you see the paint of the streets. And now they have the outdoor sitting area with some of the restaurants right here, which makes it pretty cool. And looking at the outdoor sitting areas like this and the chairs, it's kind of giving me vibes when I was traveling also. Like in Thailand, especially the Chinatown Bangkok, where they have mostly, you know, outdoor sitting area. But I think it's a really good concept. One thing that I would think it would be like a good idea is in Koreatown, which is 32nd Street. They return it fully pedestrian, have sitting areas like that. I think it'll make the neighborhood even cooler. And then Darius Street is literally, it does a curve. And back in the days, they used to call it murder alley because, you know, there was a huge rivalry of gang members and a lot of killings happened around here. But now they develop it and they make it even nicer. So, so throughout the years I've been walking and exploring around here, I've noticed how they've done a lot of changes too. So they developed this area, you know, it was literally not that special, but now they turn it into an outdoor area. 
Then they open like new business over here, like tea shops, coffee shops. I even see like Uber Lab here ahead of me. And I think it's really good because so I'm going to show you what's going on ahead of me. Most of the time, this is what you usually find in Google when you Google about the street, the Dario street. But 360 view, you see how they set it up and they, de they decorated and they made it pretty nice. And today the weather's nice, so it's a perfect day to sit down and eat food. Then I'm gonna have to try the coffee shop someday, Art Bean Roasters. I'm a huge fan of Uber and they have Uber latte. You know, hot or cold, so that's something that's pretty interesting. This is like a new tea shop. This was not here. You can even tell by looking at how they designed the building, how new it is. And of course, all of this happening around here. I think in the evening or in the weekends, so get even busier when you walk around here. You can see there's this magic here, pretty nice. Then not only they got restaurants here, they even got like barber shops. Some of the cheapest barber shops are gonna find around. And I think even like massage spots or a place where they do ear cleaning. So it's right here, you know, so you just gotta look around, know what you're getting yourself into. But really cool vibes right here. These are some of the beauty salons that they have over here. And this is the coffee joint where, where they sell that Uber latte. So someday I'll come here and try the Uber latte. And this is new to Mabu Hong Kong Cafe. So I think if you go underneath, they got like a better sitting area. So I'll show you. It looks pretty nice. And then over here, we got a beautiful old street art. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of street art. But yeah, even though I don't live far from here and I've come here many, many times, it never sees to amaze me to walk here and see the vibes, you know. It's literally like if I'm a tourist, you know. But now let's go out and let's make it to the other side of Chinatown. Most of the tourists, when they come to Chinatown, they focus in this region over here, but they forget there's another side, really next to the Manhattan Bridge, that I think is totally worth to explore. And that area is probably the, local, the most local side, and the food is a little bit more cheaper in that side than over here. So let's go over that side and see what's going on. I'm on the other side by Bowery, and you're gonna see how the vibes changes here compared to Mark Street. That side, like I said, is mostly touristy. Over here is where you're probably gonna find the real deal. And during the pandemic, I ate in a little hole in the wall restaurant, and it was really good. I, I got a meal that time. It might be a little more now because of inflation. I got like a meal for $7, and that was a beat. It had the protein, it had veggies and stuff, and the rice. So yeah, let's see what's happening over this side. And then over there you see the high-rise buildings of the financial district. Wow, I even see a little bit of a street food ahead of me. And then some of the business over here that goes all the way towards the end, towards Manhattan Bridge. So here you see what's going on. Oh, they got like a barbecue joint right here. This is really cool. It smells good too. This is a little tiny street here that they got. So ahead of me should be East Broadway. And most of the times when you Google Chinatown in Manhattan is what's gonna pop up, obviously, if you climb to the Manhattan Bridge. And I think I'm gonna leave that for the last. That's gonna be the grand finale of me going up in that bridge to capture the views of East Broadway in Chinatown. This over here is East Broadway. And like I say, this is probably the more local area. Like I say, compared to many other cities where Chinatown is literally only one street, this over here stretches many blocks and makes it a whole neighborhood making it pretty huge, you know. So over here it specializes more like in stores, massage joints. Not too many restaurants, but I think on the other side it might have a couple of restaurants. I think it's in this side the food is a bit cheaper than Mott Street. And then of course you got the Manhattan Bridge right there. I'm gonna cross to the other side to see what can I find. Another thing also is Right back there on the other side of the bridge, you could take those Chinese buses, like they say, they could take you to other states like Cleveland, Ohio, North Carolina, and they're pretty cheap. So a lot of people, you know, they try to commute affordable with catching those buses. Before I head a little bit forward, I want to show you another local plaza that is happening over here. There's kind of like a little memorial tribute to that I think it's really cool. This is another local plaza over here. You can see a little art there that says in memory of Americans, Chinese, Chinese Americans of Chinese ancestry who lost their life in defense of freedom of democracy. So got it right here, a tribute.
bunch of pigeons. I guess somebody is feeding them. And I was literally right there on Moss Street. And then you can see some of the financial districts. And now let's turn back and walk in the other way. I know sometimes I get a little bit lost, but I'm gonna figure my way and I'm gonna show you some local restaurant that I ate back in 2020 when the pandemic was hitting pretty hard. So back again in East Broadway, so I'm gonna make it all the way towards the end. And not only is it cool that we got the bridge over here, but you can also see the subway line passing by, which is gonna give it like a nice vibe. I gotta tell you, in this area, I think it's still struggling compared to the touristy area. Because I see like a lot of business, you know, shut down over here and it's a little bit more quiet than the other side. But even here, you can still see a couple of things happening. Here's like a little market with the vegetables outside and their fish. See, it's busy. A couple of action happening here ahead of me. And the locals buying, you know, their groceries. It's really nice. But in my opinion, despite this neighborhood being really cool, if you want to experience like even a better vibe, I think Flushing is better. Also, 8th Avenue and Sunset Park, Brooklyn, it's like a better vibe in terms of Chinatown. So there's another market here. And then there used to be a mall underneath the bridge called the East Broadway Mall, but it's being abandoned. Right, back in the days, it used to be busy here, but we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little bit what's happening nowadays over here, so you can have an idea. So you see under Manhattan Bridge, they got a couple of stuff going on over here. With the noise of the subway line, but I wanna show you ahead over here. There used to be the former East Broadway Mall. Oh, it's abandoned right now. It must be crazy for the people that work here, hearing the subway line passing above them every day, like pretty noisy. But I guess they're used to it. And here you get a beautiful shot of East Broadway combined with Lower Manhattan at the end. So here you see what I'm talking about. There is some maps there's another mall there, Two Bridge Mall. But then over here, I think it's totally abandoned. It looks like it's open, but there's probably nothing going on inside there. There goes the subway line again. Then on this side, I want to show you something really cool right next to the bridge. This is like a little local street where they got a couple of, you know, restaurants and shops. Elwich Street. And I ate here, you know, in 2020, like two times. Gotta love the design or this building, so it's Elwood Street with Division Street. Like I gotta tell you, like it's a different vibe, so let's walk around here so I can show you. So they opened a burger joint, Knockout Burger. So it seems like everywhere they're developing, this over here seems like it's seen better days. It used to be a rest, well, I see people in the inside, so maybe it is open. Thing, another trick for you to know if you're in Chinatown is when you see like this red light with a little yellow square in the middle, that's how you know you're in the Chinatown district. It's easier to spot it in the nighttime. Let me just cross the street to show you this beautiful church right here. So pretty nice building, wow. Beautiful structure of building. Like I said, this is probably like the local, the local area of Chinatown where a lot of people, they really don't venture around. But I think this is actually even cooler than the other spot where they got all the crazy stuff going on. And then I want to see if the little spot that I went is still here, unless they change the name. I think they might have changed the name, but it used to be like around here. I think it's actually this one. Ah, uh, no, it's not this one. Well, this one over here, Super Taste Restaurant. It looks like a pretty standard restaurant. Wow, there's people in there, but the food is really good. I'll show you a little bit. So they got dumplings, they got this, you know. So this is like a little hidden gem. The last time I came years ago in 2020, I ate this one. Stewed pork Taiwan rice. And might be a little bit more money now, but it was really cheap and the food was really good for the price that I paid. And this is the other side of Canal Street. Lower East Side is over that way. And if you go here, they got a couple of spots where you can take those Chinese buses. And this is like right after you pass the Manhattan Bridge. This must be new. Oh, they even got an African joint right here. Salam African. I think that's could be Senegal. But yeah, super local region right here. Oh, it looks like they're shooting something. This is one of those joints where you could take the buses to other states. And the back area of the bridge, Manhattan Bridge. 
here's actually one of those buses and it tells the top the places it could go Philly, DC, Raleigh, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Nashville, Tennessee, Detroit, Indianapolis. Wow, it could go all the way down there. That's really cool. But now I want to show you like another hidden gem spot. While a lot of people they know the Manhattan Bridge is right there, maybe a lot of people they don't know there's like an outdoor market in the outside. So let's walk around there and show you what's going on. Then I'm gonna show you a little bit of the local park. And then I'm doing my grand finale, going a little bit of the Manhattan Bridge to get you the shot of East Broadway and Chinatown. So this is the back area of the Manhattan Bridge and the outdoor market should be around there. So let's go check it out, hidden gem. So here it is, a little bit of it. Oh wow, they even sell shoes and stuff. This is actually really cool. This area is actually busier than Canal Street. And this is where you feel the real deal, literally right next to the bridge. Then we got fruits down here, clothes, winter outfits, because you know now in New York it's gonna get cold. You gotta love the vibes over here. What do you sell there? Crabs? Oh, they even got shellfish. And it just keeps going and they got lettuce right here. And they got more over here, nice. And the bridge is right here. This is the bike lane area. If you go on the other side, it's a pedestrian area. Yeah, that's like a little cool vibe over there in Chinatown. Now let's make it to the park to show you what's going on. Then I'm gonna turn back and go a little bit on the bridge so we can do our grand finale. It's been a great day here exploring Chinatown and never cease to amaze me. Then while we walk around the park, here is another hidden gem where you could get a perfect picture for your Instagram. Freedom Tower at the end. The Manhattan Bridge is right here. But here's a nice shot, especially when the sunset is falling down. This is amazing right here. And then to my right is part of the local park. And I gotta tell you, on this side, a lot has changed. There used to be a lot of restaurants. Even the restaurant used to go, but it's not there anymore. So you can still see that some areas are still struggling since the pandemic. But let's make a little bit towards the park and then we're gonna turn back towards the bridge. And here is, you know, another of the local park. This side will connect you to the other side. Then you can walk around here. And they have a playground. Well, I'll tell you, the weather today is beautiful. I can't ask for any better. You can start, you can start seeing little by little how the colors of the leaves are changing. It's we're in the fall season, it's no longer summer. Even though the weather feels like summer, but still. And over here, they got a basketball court. So you see the locals playing basketball over here. Then they got a uh, racquetball in the other side. So, you know, what a good vibes. And then they still got more over here. So it proves you how big this Chinatown is. So this is the entrance of Manhattan Bridge. So I got to go on the other side so I can get the views of Chinatown. So I made it in Manhattan Bridge. Not gonna cross it, but I'm gonna walk towards the area where you can get the good view of the city, which is mostly the uh, area that pops up when you Google about Chinatown, Manhattan. And here you can see, compared to the Brooklyn Bridge, I always packed this one here is more local. Then another cool thing is that when you're walking around the bridge, the train passes next to you. So I think that's something that it makes it different from the Brooklyn Bridge. Also, the Williamsburg Bridge is worth to explore and cross. Not sure if you can see it, there goes the train. And the bridge right here. This is actually the end train. And then you can start seeing some of the skyline of the city. Hopefully I gotta tell you, I'm scared of heights. I'm already starting to shake a little bit. But it gets even higher when you go ahead. But luckily I'm just walking around here to get the view of East Broadway. But he got this fence here. I don't remember this fence used to be over here. But let's see what can I get. So this is it here. Let me see if I can get a view. East Broadway, you see the ending of Lower Manhattan. The iconic view of Chinatown. So that was the end of my video exploring Chinatown right here in Manhattan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Be safe out there. Everybody, God bless y'all and peace. Thank <laughs> you.